Today we are gonna go through the muscular system and we're gonna do this very efficiently. We don't have time for anything else. So we're gonna treat this chapter like a, um, like a HIIT workout, high intensity interval training, as opposed to yoga. Um, so they're both really good exercise forms that um, ba the basic idea with HIIT interval training is that you, you work hard for short periods of time and then you get a little bit of a rest in between. Uh, so that's how we're gonna approach this chapter. Our first little section here is just gonna be talking about structure of muscles and then we will get into mechanisms, how they do what they do? Um, how do contractions take place? So starting off with structure in this first video, muscle structure. All right, so skeletal muscles, these are muscles that attach to bones. Uh, so they attach to the skeleton and they allow us control over our, over our skeletons. And we have voluntary control over skeletal muscles. So we can choose when to contract them or not. Uh, the structure of muscles is shown on the slide here. You can see it's made up of many different uh, sorts of bundles of fibers, and we'll be talking about what's going on in those fibers in just a minute. Um, when we say muscle fiber, that is referring to muscle cells. So this word fiber, muscle fiber, this is talking about muscle cells. We just call them fibers because they are elongated. Muscle fibers can be activated to contract by motor neurons. So we're going to be revisiting a little bit about the nervous system um, later on in this chapter. Uh, let's just look at the picture here together for a minute. So this is showing a muscle, a skeletal muscle, that connects to this bone via a tendon. So tendons, um, by definition, what a tendon is, is it's a piece of connective tissue that's joining muscle with bone. So right here we have a tendon, and if you look at what this tendon does, it kind of extends out and it wraps around the entire muscle. So that's all connective tissue that's, that's wrapping the muscle. Um, the muscle itself um, has a number of connective tissue innervations. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the muscle itself is wrapped in what we call epimysium, and epimysium as you can see here in the picture, it innervates through all the different um, muscle fibers. And that's really important. If that connective tissue was not innervating through the muscle, uh, then what would happen when this muscle contracts is it would be very weak and it would potentially tear a lot more easily than muscles do. Um, so that connective tissue that's built in, that's very important just in strengthening the whole, the whole muscle structure. Okay, so we're gonna be zooming in. Um, as you can see here, so there are many layers of organization within a muscle. Um, when we talk about a whole muscle, we could be talking about like the bicep or the triceps. Um, the whole muscle is made up of many bundles of muscle fibers. So bundles of muscle cells put together. And each of those muscle fibers, individual cells, um, consists of, well, it's a cell, so it has the normal organelles that cells do, but it also has special organelles called myofibrils. And the myofibrils are what allow muscle cells to contract. So we will be looking at, in detail, myofibril structure in just a minute. Let's go ahead on to the next slide here. Um, so again, talking about the connections to bones. Okay, so each muscle in the body that connects to the skeleton has two ends, and it attaches on both ends. We're just looking at an example with the bicep right here. Um, so there's one end of the muscle that connects to sort of like an anchor point. In the case of the bicep, this is actually connecting back to, to the scapula bone. Um, so that connection point this is the one that it's very stable. It's not like your scapula moves a whole bunch when your bicep contracts. Um, so this one back here is called the origin. This point of attachment is called the origin. And this other end where this tendon connects to the arm, this is called the insertion. So two different ends, uh, two different connection points for each muscle, origin and insertion. When we contract the biceps, when this muscle contracts, what happens is the joint around the elbow um, that, that joint moves, right? So um, when we talk about flexion versus extension, so the flexion, right? Flexion when you flex your, when you contract your bicep, your arm flexes. Um, the reason we call that flexion is because the joint angle is decreasing right here measured at the elbow. Extension is defined by increasing the joint angle. So flexion versus extension, it all has to do with what's going on at the joint. 
So different types of skeletal muscle actions are possible um, just depending on what type of joint is involved and what sort of muscle attachments exist around that joint. So these are some uh, words that you will have already learned if you've taken anatomy. You, you will be learning them if you go on and take anatomy. Um, different types of movements have different names and these are very important in medical fields if you're trying to talk about well, defining problems, what, what is the problem, what is the difficulty point, um, or, or different issues that might be trying to be addressed in different situations. Okay, let's look at an individual muscle fiber in more detail. So again, this is talking about a single cell, um, which is called a muscle fiber. All right, so we know that uh, muscle fibers, they they have the, the same things that other cells have. They have to have a plasma membrane, they have to have organelles inside. The plasma membrane around a muscle cell is called a sarcolemma. This word right here, this is just talking about a plasma membrane specifically on a muscle cell. Muscle cells get some special terminology, um, special words, sarcolemma is one of those special words. So that's talking about the plasma membrane. And then inside, um, inside of the, muscle fiber. There are organelles. We're going to be focused in on myofibrils. Uh, so these are the specialized organelles that allow muscles to contract. Myofibrils. Let's take a look at the close-up down here. Myofibrils have myofilaments inside of them. So this blown up picture right here, this is showing um, one myofibril and you can see all these little filaments sticking out of it. Those individual myofilaments are the contractile units inside of or that contain the tractile units inside of the cell. So when we look at uh, skeletal muscles through a microscope, what we end up seeing are these banding patterns. This is very characteristic of um, skeletal muscle. Cardiac muscle has striations too. Um, but this is what skeletal muscle looks like when we view it in a microscope. And all of these striations, all of these lines, are due to the structure of the myofilaments. Um, so the myofilaments are made up of two types of filaments. There are thick filaments and thin filaments. And what we're seeing in the microscope is those different types, those different thicknesses. Um, so let's just move on to this slide here. When we see those striations, okay, really what we're seeing is these darker areas are where the thick filaments are located and these lighter areas are where the thin filaments are at. So more light is able to get through uh, just because they're thinner filaments. The thin filaments are actin thick filaments are myosin, and they exist in an overlapping structure like this right here. So the myosin is shown in green, actin is shown in purple, and you can see they overlap each other a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about how contraction happens. It's going to revolve around what's going on right there at the overlap point. That'll be in the next video. This whole structure, um, actin and myosin put together, this exists in sort of a special unit. It's called a sarcomere. And sarcomeres are banded on both sides. You can see in the microscope picture, you can see these dark lines. Uh, those are called the Z-discs or the Z-lines. And that's, that's the boundary between, like, between this sarcomere and, for example, this sarcomere. You know, that Z-line provides the boundary between adjacent sarcomeres. So what happens during a contraction is that these filaments are going to slide past each other. Let's take a look at a schematic of that. Um, so we start off with actin and myosin. They're sort of, they're overlapped a little bit, but not too much. And then as a contraction takes place, those filaments slide past each other. So overall, the muscle ends up shortening as a result of that um, sliding of the filament. So this is called the sliding filament theory of how muscles contract. And we can see that in the schematic here. We can also see it in a real uh, microscope image of, of a muscle. So relaxed partially contracted, fully contracted. Okay, the overlapping has just increased, so um, you can see the, the Z lines are getting closer together as a result of that contraction. When a muscle relaxes, so when it's done contracting, how does it go back to its original shape? Well, it turns out that the sarcomeres also contain a special molecule called titan. This is a protein that kind of acts like a spring. It's very elastic, and when the muscle relaxes, um, that, that spring uh, just helps to bring it back to its original shape. So that's titan. Titan is interesting because it is the largest protein in the human body. It's a really big protein um, and it's very elastic. So it's good at, at returning to its original shape. Uh, this titan also helps to just stabilize the whole structure of the sarcomere. It's acting as an anchor between myosin and the Z-disc. It helps to stabilize the whole muscle.